Hello, I'm Titanic Spider, and in this video I will be going over the German Treaty Boom. On screen you will see two basic decks for Germany, one for natives and one without natives. As you can see, both decks have the Team Settler Wagon card in it. In single player, you will want to replace that with something that buffs your units like either the Age 2 card Hand Infantry Attack or the card Hand Infantry Hit Points. But in this video I will be doing the boom using the Team Settler Wagons so that you can see the boom as if you had a teammate. So anyway, let's just get right into it. Germany is one of the most micromanaged civs that you're going to end up playing. It can get pretty hectic at age 3, but with a lot of practice you can get used to it. You're going to want to set your first villager to go to your gold, and then once you're done gathering the food crates you can send two to, to the hunts, and then one will get the rest of the wood and then go directly to the trees. Your first settler, you're going to want to gather the chest of coins and build your first house, and the rest after that you're going to want to send to the tree line. The goal here is to try and get the marketplace upgrades as quickly as possible. Since the settler wagons have a higher gather rate than regular settlers do, you're going to want to use your settlers for all the building as well as all the herding. Now that we have the settler going directly to the house, we can have the TC set the, all the new settlers going directly to the tree line. I like to use my first settler that came out to build the house and then go to the hunt because you're going to want to switch one of those settler wagons over to the trees to help gather faster. I usually wait a little bit till I have three in production this way I don't have to worry about having an idle TC before I switch one over but make sure all new settlers go directly to the tree line. Keep an eye on the hunts as you go as settler wagons do pick them up a lot faster you don't want to have too much idle time on your settler wagons so make sure you have the hunts herded nearby as well as a hunt ready for it to gather if possible. You're gonna want to get enough wood to get hunting dogs as well as the placer mine upgrade so you're gonna stay on wood until you have a total of 125 wood and then you're gonna switch all your villagers over to to the hunts until your placer mine upgrade is done. You're going to start with hunting dogs and then you're going to go with the placer mines. Your first card you're going to send is going to be economic theory and then after that you're going to hold any new shipments that you get for age 3. Now that we have the 75 wood we can go ahead and switch all our villagers over to the hunt. You're going to want to wait on the placer mine until you're sure that you're not going to have an idle TC and that's going to be alright. So you're going to continue to send all your villagers over to hunts until you have the placer mine upgrade done. You don't want to waste any villager time on gathering mines if you're not getting the extra bonus. So go ahead and once you have everything set up, then you can go ahead and decide when to switch them over. You're going to want to manage your villagers and your settler wagons as needed for both age 2 and age 3. You're going to want to age up to age 2 with a total of 18 population. And then you're just going to manage your gathering until you have the correct needed to go from age 2 directly to age 3. If done correctly, you should be able to go straight into age 3 smoothly. But it is very reliant on having good treasures that you find. You will want to get the gang saw upgrade, but you want to wait till you go into age 3 because it'll slow down your transition from age 2 into age 3, so make sure you wait on getting that. While you're waiting, make sure you go ahead and explore as much as you can with your explorer and gather as many food and coin shipments as uh, food and coin treasures as possible as that'll help you with your easy transition over.
you want to age up with 400 wood. Reason for that is while you're going into age 3, you're going to use that wood to get your upgrades as well. If you can, if they're not too far away, and you see treasure, uh, if you see hunts nearby, you're gonna want to try and herd them as close to your TCs as possible. Because in age three, you're gonna be building mills because you need them to build the settler wagons. So the closer your the closer the hunts and closer they are to a mine, the better for you. Again, keep an eye on all the resources that you are gathering. Try and keep it as close to 1200 food and 1000 gold as possible for the fastest transition over to age 3. You're going to age up with covered wagon and then you want to leave most of your villagers on gold and then have some transition over to gather the wood. You're going to want to gather enough gold to get both wood upgrades before you get into age three if possible. With one of your villagers make sure you get a house this way you don't house yourself going into age three. But you're going to want to get enough wood for the log flume upgrade as well as the steel traps so which is going to be a total of 375 gold you're going to want to prioritize the wood upgrade before you get the steel traps upgrade but you might also need to hold off on the steel traps upgrade this way you can ensure that you don't have idle time waiting on getting a tc so once you gather the gold for once you gather the gold for steel traps go ahead and switch all your villagers over from the gold over to the the tree line as you can see i don't have the 500 need for the tc i'm not going to get the steel trap upgrade i'm going to get the tc first then i'll get the steel trap upgrade make sure you have a couple of villagers in queue set to go to the tree line reason for this is because when you send a shipment with with Germany, you get Ulans and they'll take up population space. You're gonna want to make sure you delete those Ulans because you're gonna need the population space for for settler wagons as well as all your villagers. Once you age up, make sure you start your mill upgrade as well as your refrigeration upgrade. Go ahead and place your TC and then build the TC with the Explorer. You're gonna want to put most of your villagers onto the onto wood for the for the settler wagons because they cost 100 wood and you're going to need the extra 400 to build the to build the mills and you're going to want to build two mills the way i usually do it is i have the tcs send all the villagers to the to the tree line and then i have the settler wagons go directly to the hunts as well as the gold as you can see the ulans come out make sure you delete them as soon as you have enough wood to build estates make sure you build them as close to mines or hunts as possible this way there's less travel time for your your settler wagons again as soon as the tcs are up make sure you get 
get them producing, this way you have little downtime as possible. This is where it begins to get crazy. You're going to still want to explore with your explorer, get any treasure you can, explore the enemy base, but the, the hardest part here is managing building conti continuous production of villagers, settler wagons, as well as the houses, as you will be needing all of them. Since I am playing with the team settler wagon card, I am going to go ahead and send it and make sure that, that my mill is not idle. Again, you're going to want to build two estates. You're going to want to get about 15 to 18 villagers on wood, and then all the settler wagons and the settlers themselves can be uh, split between coin as well as food, prioritizing food until later on. Make sure you set your mill to, to produce the settler wagons directly to a hunt or a gold mine to ensure that you don't have any idle settler wagons. You're going to want to produce a full 20 settler wagons before you go to the next stage up as it will get you three extra settler wagons. That's the only way you can over pop on settler wagons. It is okay to build your mill further out of the base as you're going to want you're going to delete it later on anyway. Again, you're going to want to prioritize settler wagons over building settlers. So if you're going to have an idle TC, it is okay to go ahead. So it is okay. Again, keep an eye on the housing because you it is very it is very easy to to run out of population space. Again, go ahead and delete those Ulans as they're just going to take up population space. Once you have the full 20 in production, you can go ahead and take your villagers off of the wood and go ahead and switch as much over to, to food and gold as you need to try and get into age four as soon as possible. Again, you don't want to slow down production of, of TCs if you can avoid it. You're going to age up with the three settler wagons and the extra wood. You're going to continue to, to send all your villagers and settler wagons over to hunt as well as gold. As you can see, having having the, the hunt so far away can be, a, can be problematic as it's going to end up causing a lot of idle settler wagons and settlers.
it's okay to have a couple of villagers on wood if you see fit, just to ensure that when, once you hit age four, you're not gonna have any idle time on your TCs. Make sure you get your factories out as soon as possible, which will also produce oolongs as well. So make sure you're going to be building those houses still to ensure that you don't get capped on hou uh, housing space. At this point, you're just going to micro as best you can to ensure you go into age 5 as soon as possible. If you did it correctly in age 4, you would have already had the required resources going into it. Unfortunately, as you can see, I did not pay attention well enough and I'm a little bit behind, but that's alright. Not too far behind. You're going to age up with 2000 gold and you're going to want to still make sure you overgather on gold, but for the production speed of your villagers as well as your upgrades in your your capital later on as well as the church upgrade go ahead and get the church go ahead and get the stable and start sending your villagers over to wood you want to set your factories to wood as soon as possible and then you're going to want to begin getting your mill upgrades as well as your your estate upgrades once you have the options It is okay to have your mills out in, out in the middle of nowhere, but make sure you start switching your settler wagons over to them as soon as you start getting the upgrades. Go ahead and make sure any idols that you have go to wood while you're waiting on your, your, estate, your mill upgrades and your state upgrades. Make sure you also get the, the next market upgrade. And then once you hit age five, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to build is the capital and go straight into the unit production upgrade with for 2000 gold. Once you see that your estates are upgraded, you're gonna to wanna to start, or once you see that your mills are upgraded, you're gonna to wanna to start moving your settler wagons over onto the mills while also building the estates. You're gonna to wanna to build seven or eight estates because you're gonna put a, up to 70 or 80 villagers on onto the estates. First upgrade you're gonna to wanna to get is that one. You wanna get wood and or food, however you see fit. But you're gonna to wanna to make sure you put your settler wagons over onto the mills. You don't wanna overcrowd them since they do take up a lot more space than the regular settlers do. So make sure you build a couple extra mills. Again, make sure your factories are set to wood. Next, up, next shipment you're gonna to wanna to get is guild artisans as it will increase the settler wagon production rate. You don't wanna switch any of your villagers over to the estates until you have all upgrades on the estates. This way you can optimize how much wood gather you end up getting. But again, never stop production on your TCs, but make sure you're not overbuilding on your TCs, which would cost you upgrades in your capital. If you don't, if you weren't able to gather enough gold for all the upgrades in the capital, make sure you switch your factories over till you get the gold required to get the, up, the final upgrades in the capital.
again. At this point, you shouldn't need to delete your Oolongs. You probably could have stopped a little earlier, but it's okay if you delete them as you're probably going to make different units anyway. You want to make sure all your settler wagons find their way to, to mills as you're going to want only settler wagons on the mills themselves. Once you have all the upgrades on the estates, you can then go ahead and start shifting villagers off of wood over to the estates. Again, you're going to want to build seven or eight maybe even nine depending on how many you want on each estate but you should have a total of 23 settler wagons all on mills After this, if you're in a team, you're going to go ahead and get team food silos. So I'm going to do that since I've been playing as if we are in a team. If not, you're going to want to get sustainable agriculture as it gives you a higher gather rate on mills. After that, you're going to want to focus on getting your gold upgrades. Make sure you go ahead and get the church upgrade, but after that you can go ahead and get all your upgrades that, that you can as you see fit. As right now, all you're going to be doing is gathering. Make sure you begin switching your villagers over from wood to gold if you haven't already done it. You want to get about 70 to 75 on it, and then the rest can go ahead and stay on wood. If you have a mill that's way out close to the edge of the build limit, make sure you use a villager to go ahead and build a mill closer to, to the inner, inner portion of your base before you move your settler wagons. This way, they're already ready to build and you don't have to worry about having downtime. At this point, you can begin walling up, building your forward base wherever you plan to build, as well as just getting all the upgrades that you can get. Again, you want to try and keep the amount of settler wagons on each mill limited. This way they have less travel time since they do bump into each other. H3 is a bit hectic compared to other, other sieves. But if you've done correctly, you can get anywhere between 240,000, and if done really well, you can get upwards of 270,000 and higher. One thing to keep in mind that I had a lot of trouble trying to figure out why I had a lot of idle units is that with Germany, when you send your shipments for your eco upgrades you and you get Ulan, they do not come out as the military home city. They come out as the economic home city. So make sure that you check your, your base for any idle Ulans or set up an idle military hotkey to make sure you can grab them and move them. This way during the fight, you don't have just three to 20 Ulans sitting in the middle of your base. The only units you're gonna be needing to upgrade from the infantry side are gonna be your Doppels and your Skirms. And for the cavalry, you're gonna be upgrading both your Ulans and your war wagons. And then for artillery, you're gonna do the normal culverines, mortars, and horse artillery. 
but you do want to make sure you go ahead and get both the imperial upgrade for the heavy cannons as well as the speed production because you're going to want to start the fight with two heavy cannons so once that is done you can switch your your factories over and send those two out as soon as you want or you can wait if you so desire Unlike other civs, Germany, since they do have the overpop of settler wagons, you're going to have very low fighting numbers, very low military pop space. So before the fight, you're going to want to set up anywhere between 40 and 50 settlers that you can delete later on. This way, just before the fight, you can go ahead and clear up some space and build the extra little military that you're going to need. I personally like to set up 50 because you can always delete, you can always rebuild them later. And if you're if you're gonna send out the heavy cannons, make sure you keep an eye on your factories as you do not want idle factories because once those two heavy cannons come out, you're going to want to switch them right back to wood. At this point, you probably won't get another shipment until just before the fight phase. You're going to want to hold on to it because you're going to want to use that to get the little extra couple of Ulans as a little bit of an overpop. So at this point, once you have that final coin shipment sent, save the next one that you get. As soon as they come out, make sure you switch them back over to wood. Make sure if you do set up a control group for the village that you plan to delete before the fight, that you do not delete all your forward villagers that are on wood as you're going to need them to build a forward base. Try to avoid what I did here where I put the estates too close to the wall, but if, if you do that, you can always move them, but since this is a skirmish, I'm not going to waste my time doing that. That is just unfortunate placement on my part.
since now we're going to have a bunch of downtime as we have to wait for the next eight minutes, we'll go over the starting army. You can either start with two heavy cannons and two horse artillery if you want, just two heavy cannons, or you can have the factories pump out another two heavy cannons, although they do take up a lot of space. I like to start with two heavy cannons and sometimes two extra horse cannons, but you want to make sure you also get four culverines to defend your heavy cannons, because if not, and your if your opponent has have, has culverines, you're just going to lose your heavy cannons to the, your opponent's culverines. Depending on what your opponent's starting army is, you're going to want to either make doppels or you're going to want to have needle gunners. Germany is very heavy on gold, so you're going to want to be careful with how you build it. And you're going to want to probably focus more on, on skirmishers than on doppels, as well as you're going to want to build four to five war wagons here and there. Your war wagons are going to be your, your ranged cavalry. They're going to be your one of your tankiest units, as it should have over a thousand health once you have all your upgrades. The Ulans are a pretty weak unit. So you're going to want to use them sparingly and try and focus more on your skirmishers and your war wagons with the occasional doppels. And if if your opponents go in heavy on skirmishers, you can send in a couple of Ulans or you can just out micro them with your with your artillery. As you can see, no upgrades outside of the ones you get on from the stable and it's already got 900 health. Make sure you got all your upgrades as well as your your tower upgrade. Once you do delete your villagers to go into the combat phase, you're going to want to move at least 10 to 15 of your settler wagons over to gold as they are far heavier on gold than they are on food. As you can see, the only one that isn't more on gold than it is is food is the war wagon. And since all your artillery is going to be wood and gold, you're going to want to make sure that you focus more heavily on gold. For now, the reason why your settler wagons are on food is because the more you can gather now, the less you have to worry about it later. As you can see, we have seven minutes left and still haven't gotten the next shipment, which is why we're going to end up just holding on to the shipment for an overpop later on. At this point, there isn't much left to do, so we're, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up and stop it at about a minute left in the fight and explain the rest before we get into it.
So now with, we're coming to the close. We're almost at the point where it's time to start deleting. You're going to want to delete them between a minute and 15 seconds left and a minute left. You can easily do it at a minute left if you quick enough, but I like to give myself an extra 10 seconds and delete at about a minute and 10 seconds left to give myself a little time to get the, the production out as well as the extra overpop with the minute men, which I will show you in just a second. As you can see, we got a minute and 20 seconds left. I'm going to prepare it and sit here for just a couple of seconds. And once that comes out, I'm going to get out as much of my over pop as possible and then i'll show you what to do all right delete them all and i me personally i'm just going to go ahead and send skirmishers out and a couple of war wagons you're going to want to stop at exactly 199 and send your last shipment it takes 40 seconds to get the last shipment out so that's why i would try, like to give myself a little bit of extra time then you're going to want to send all your minute men from your tcs out as well this will give you just enough time if you're quick to try and get your village, all your units set up best way that you can. See, gonna be very close on time, which is why I like to give a little extra time to prepare. Cuts it really close at the minute 10 seconds. If you wanna give yourself a little bit more, you can go ahead as it takes a little time for everything to get out of here. And here comes the extra two Ulans from the, the shipment that we sent. And just like that, 260K, 270K, depending on how well you manage age three. And exactly, oops, exactly 40 minutes, we got 262,000. It gets a little hectic in age three and it does require a lot of management. You don't want to spend too much time on wood, too much time on food, too much time on gold. It gets a little crazy, a little bit difficult. But it is possible. If if you're struggling to do it, you should easily get about 240,000 with this play style. If, even if you overgather a little bit on food or a little bit on gold or a little bit on wood or if you miss one of the upgrades. 240,000 is a very good starting score. And the top tier players often get between 270 to 275,000. As you can see, I've been practicing, practicing this a lot, and honestly, 262,000 is currently the highest I've ever gotten. So don't be discouraged if you don't get 262,000. I've been playing Germany for quite a while now, and that's still a good score. Anyway, I do stream over on Twitch if you do want to come out and play a little bit, practice the Germany boom with me, or play against me, that's fine. If there's any questions you've got, please leave them down below. Anyway, thank you for coming out and I hope you enjoy.